In this session, I want to be very practical. My mentor once uh, said to me, let's compare the church with a pub. Why do men go on a Friday night to a pub? They go to the pub and as they enter the pub, they are not always accepted by the audience inside because maybe you're a foreigner. But when you sit down and you order your first drink, the people start to relax. After your third or seventh or eighth confession that you're part of the group, people start to talk and you talk to the people. By 11, 12 o'clock at night, everybody is talking to everybody. And that's what we call bragging. They, they, they talk about their lives, they open up. And in a certain sense, that is what they want to do. They want to talk about the hurts in their lives, uh, amplifying the hurts and, and the things that they've done in life. The wonderful thing about a pub culture is this. The next morning when everybody wakes up, wherever they are, yesterday is forgiven, yesterday is forgotten. There is no social bracketing that comes with it. Nobody will say, oh, did you hear what he said last night? No, it's pub talk, it it is all over. But in a church we tend to be different. And Martin Luther said a very interesting thing. He said, have we rather spoken about congregation instead of church? We would have understood the word ecclesia better that Jesus used to describe his church. And as I said in a previous session, ecclesia is the place that we provide a platform for people to say who they really are. And very basically what it is, is that four or five people come together. And we want to be as in the book of Ephesians, where Paul says to us, when we come together and we share the giftings that we have, then we can become as a unity and in love, we can become the full stature of Christ in the society where we are living. I'm not saying that it is in the Bible, in Ephesians 4, you check it out. Paul also says to us in the book of Corinthians that God has given us different giftings. Every one of us have has a different gift that can be utilized in the process to empower other people for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is exactly in a nutshell what Eccle therapy is all about. Eccle is the ecclesia, three, four, five, six people, small group, come together and they give a platform to a person to share his or her life and tell that group who they really are, amplifying what James says to us, that we should confess our sins to one another, that the process of healing can also then take place. And as John said to us also in the book, first book of John, when we live in the light that Jesus is and we open up, then God is trustworthy, he's faithful, he will cleanse us, he will heal us, and he will forgive us. So what does this group look like? For me, ideally, it is a group of people, first of all, before the ideal comes in, every member of that group must have a history of absolute confidentiality. You cannot allow people with a gossiping spirit to be part of that group because people share their lies. They, in in, in a literal sense, not a literal sense, standing there before you naked, transparent, they share the guts of their lives because they want to be healed, they want to be forgiven. The last thing such a person wants, and anybody wants, is for what has happened that night to become public knowledge. Yes, we need to be in public, but public in this sense is that we need to confess what in the Old Testament, New Testament was called elders. And elders for me are people that are spiritually mature, people that have a relationship with Jesus Christ, people that have number one confidentiality written over them, people that listen better than they can talk. And when we get these people together, ideally then, it would be people with different giftings in their lives. It could be that some or one of them could be even an, 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 an psychologist. It, it, the grouping, the sector, the giftings that we have is all and should all be pulled together so that we can help a person to come to a fullness of healing in Jesus Christ. Some people might have a word of, of knowledge. Other people might have a word of wisdom. Some people, when everything is over, will give a prophecy to say to this person, this is the way that we are going to move forward. So how do we construct this? And let me read from my book that I have here. First of all, you open basically uh, with prayer. And important that everybody must relax. And then you outline what is going to happen. And many times when we get a person in like that, 
I've t I will, would have taken them through the eye therapy that was explained in, in, in one of my other YouTube uh, sections, that the people already come to a situation that they're desperate enough to say, look, I've gone through all the programs, but I now need to come and share that one thing in my life that is hindering me, the hurdle that is stopping me to move forward in my life. Let the people relax, let them come together, a short prayer, and then allow the person to start to talk. Don't talk too much. Allow the Holy Spirit to move. Allow the Holy Spirit to move into sector after sector after sector into the person's life. And sometimes you have to help with a word of wisdom or insight, a word of knowledge. Um, just tell me something about your relationship with your dad or what happened in your life when you were eight years old. You see, God gives us the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not as an entertainment, entertainment value, but to bring it into a situation like that so that a person could be freed from the bondage that they are in. And when that person is opened up, when that person is pulled all their guts, when they stand there transparent, God says, then I will clean, I will forgive, and I will heal. And it's so nice after that just to see and to hear somebody bring a prophetic utterance, saying, but when you talked, I saw you standing like this, and I saw that your old clothes became new clothes, and I saw this, and I saw that, and I saw that. And it would be confirmed by another person in the group. So the basis of ecletherapy is actually very easy. It's to be you, available by God with a small group for other people. Or maybe you are the one that is and are in need of healing. Then get into such a group where you can bring forward what has happened. Let me close with a testimony. One of the ladies came to our group many, many years ago, and I want to say many, many years ago because we need to understand the context of what has happened. And the basis of what has happened is he brought her husband with, is that before they got married, they were at the end of their school line and they were very happy, they were very much in love, but they also, she fell pregnant. And in those days especially, for people to be have sex outside of marriage was a, a horrific sin. Secondly, to have an abortion is something that was not allowed or even talked about in those days. And they were very scared when they were young. She fell pregnant and they decided not to tell anyone, but they arranged for an abortion somewhere else in the city and not too far from there. And then she came back and they started the, apparently their normal relationship and they got married because of the peer pressure. Their parents were well known in the community. One was a minister, the other one was a parent was a very successful business person. So they, they went through the motions and they got married. But the self-rejection of this lady never stopped. She performed sex with her husband as a duty, but not as an act of love. She hated her husband. He was the cause of her bitterness. And eventually she contracted ovarian cancer. And by that time she was at the end of her life. She was despondent and there was nothing more to lose. She was at a place that she said, I can be transparent, whatever you ask of me. And that night she started to share her life. She started to share what it felt like when she went into the city, was pulled down into a dirty bed, when her, her body was opened up and out of her body was ripped the only life that she thought she would ever be, 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 be a, a, a woman. And, and that dirty instrument, everything that happened, she just screamed and she said, where is my husband? Where is God in this city? situation. And she went back to her hometown asking, where is God? Is there a God? He, she started to hate her husband. She started to hate herself even more than her husband. She rejected herself for that, that she has committed the abortion and also the sex that she had before marriage. And in the self-rejection, her body started to respond. And that evening, she started to spoil the guts. She looked at her husband and she said to him, where were you when this happened? Why weren't you at my side? Why on earth did we go through? Why didn't we have the guts to run away and start our own lives? And after she shouted and she screamed, and she said, where was God? Suddenly, she broke down. She fell on her knees and she started to cry. 
And then her husband went next to her and touched her. And for the first time in 24 years, she wanted his embrace. And she looked up to him and she said, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And he started to cry. And he started to share how he felt. Lousy, leaving her to go to the city. Coward, not to run away and start their own lives. Telling her how for 25 years he wanted to hold her and just tell her how much he loved her. But she never wanted to allow him to do that. And as they cried together, as they opened up, suddenly the atmosphere changed. And eventually they looked one another in the eye and asked forgiveness and asked God for forgiveness. And then we served them community. Three weeks later, sorry, three months later, we had a phone call. And she just shared that the cancer is gone. Now I'm not saying today that all ovarian cancer is the cause of something like this. I'm using a specific incident where somebody shared and just opened up and God provided the healing to come with that. And people, this is the basis of ecotherapy, that we provide a platform for people to come and say in total confidentiality with the giftings of the Holy Spirit to empower that person then to move on in life and live a full life as Ephesians described for us to the fullness of Jesus Christ. Maybe God is calling you today to start such a group. Maybe he's asking you to search for such a group. Whatever the situation is, let's do it now.